gases, from the Greek word meaning chaos. Because, well, you know, solids are highly organized uh, forms of matter, and liquids, not so much. And then gases, well, not at all, completely random. So, gases, uh, well, first of all, gases, in terms of their properties, well, what do they, what do they, they occupy their container volume fully. You pour a liquid or solid into a container, it might not take up the entire space, but you put a lid on top of, uh, of a container when you put a gas in there, gas is going to move all over the place through diffusion, that's another property of them, to occupy the container volume fully. And because gases can actually be compressed and expanded, oh man, they've got all kinds of practical purposes and uses in our modern society. Hey, uh, 760 millimeters of mercury, what, what is that number? Well, a long time ago, an Italian guy, Torricelli, he found that mercury would rise up in an evacuated chamber that, that didn't have any air molecules in it, about 760 millimeters at sea level. And so he said, well, okay, at sea level then, here's what I understand, that the air is exerting a force on top of the mercury, which is pushing it up the column. And so he said that the air pressure was 760 millimeters of mercury, and we also call that in his honor, 760 tor for Torricelli. Even though it's a capital T, I think it's even more of a compliment that we just abbreviate it with a small t for Torricelli. That's pretty cool. Hey, and, and so we use that, we still use that. I mean, you know, like in terms of uh, 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 blood pressure, that's still measured in millimeters of mercury, right? Uh, so that's still a highly functional unit today. Uh, but, you know, what we've also done is we've taken the concept of pressure and we've applied it metrically to how many newtons of force are actually applied per unit area and so a newton per meter squared is actually a kilopascal. And what's the relationship between that and the tors? Well, for every 760 millimeters of mercury at sea level, we've got 101.325 kilopascals uh, in honor of Pascal, right? But it's kilopascals. Um, okay, so you know what? We finally come up with a good idea and said, well, you know, at sea level, what should we just call pressure? How about one? That's way better. And so that's called one atmosphere. So at sea level, we got one or 1.00 atmospheres of pressure. And if you're asked to toggle between those units, you understand that if somebody said, hey, take some tor, like 600 tor, and turn it into KPAs, and you're going, uh, well, yeah, I know what those numbers are. Just set it up as a ratio to be able to find the KPAs by doing something like 600 tor, times and then how many KPAs, 101.325 for every 760 tor, and when you do that math you get 80 kilopascals. Makes sense because that's less than one atmosphere of pressure, that's one atmosphere of pressure, that's one atmosphere of pressure, and less than one atmosphere of pressure for 101.325 KPA, 80 kilopascals, yeah that makes entirely good sense. Hope it didn't mix you up there. So now let's talk about the history of how we develop certain laws about gases.